I'm sitting on the can one morning, reading an issue of New York Magazine. I'm just going to set the scene for you. And uh, I was reading this article about these two kids who are both prodigious, gifted kids, you know, in the same family. One was a musical prodigy, and the other one was, a, I think, a mathematical prodigy. And um, I had this idea. You know, my dad had been a prodigy. And, I f and, and the idea right then and there was, well, if you can be a musical prodigy or a mathematical prodigy, under the right circumstances, why couldn't you be any other kind of a prodigy? You know? So put the magazine down. And by the time I was finished with my shower, I had the whole thing. I, f I figured out who the boy was, why he'd become obsessed with medicine at a very, very early age. Uh, who his family was, who his father and mother was. You know. And so literally within a half an hour, I had the entire thing laid out in my, in my head. And it made absolute sense to me. Absolute sense to me. And I thought, this could be great. And I sold it to them as the first show that we did. And they, they bought it enthusiastically. Um, I wrote the first script with David Kelly. And when they read it, they got very nervous because it wasn't I think they were expecting, you know, a, a half-hour sitcom with an audience and laughs and, and a little goofy kid, you know. And, you know, here, here's this episode where, <laughs> where this kid has to give his girlfriend a pelvic, you know, because she had appendicitis and, you know, whatever the hell. They got very nervous. And almost backed out, you know? And I said, look, you know, this is the show I want to do. If you don't want to do it, that's one thing, but I'm not going to change it into something else. They very reluctantly went forward. Everybody was very nervous. Uh, they were very reluctant to uh, go with my choice of Neil. Neil Harris was the kid because he wasn't cute and funny the way they had envisioned. And, and again, it was one of those things where, guys, I can't make you say yes to this, and I don't want to try to make you say yes to it, but I'm not going to change it. This is what it is or it ain't going to be. So again, very reluctantly, OK. But when this show went on the air and it was an instant hit, uh, I think they were stunned. I think they were stunned at ABC. I was just delighted, you know, but they were stunned. Uh, and in their and in their typical way, they you know they mismanaged that show, right out of being a seven-year hit. I think you know it was a show that was doing great, and and in its fourth season they moved it out of a time slot that it was doing great business in and. You know, we were on Wednesday nights at, at 9 o'clock, uh, if I recall, and we were beating a show called Seinfeld like a drum every week. Bam, bam, bam. We were kicking the crap out of them. And they moved us to Monday at 8 o'clock. Why, you know, why, why, why would you do that? You know, we got a lock on this time slot. I went, well, blah, blah, blah. blah. I said, there's no way we can perform Monday at 8, the way we were, you know. It'll be fine. We're not, we, we just don't have the same expectations Monday at 8 that we had Wednesday at 9, blah, 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 blah. 
we didn't do it nearly as well on Monday at 8 as we did Wednesday at 9, and they canceled us in the fourth season. 